Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Green. Welcome to our weekly Bible study. We're so elated to have you with us tonight. We are in the still in the book of Exodus, and we'll be beginning at chapter 22. We do chapter 22, 23, and 24. Uh, these are some very important scriptures, and it has to do with the law. Uh, at this time, God is giving the law of Moses. He's basically dictating the law, and the law and Moses is going to give instructions on how the judgment. Uh, on the people is going to take place, um, how the, the legal system is going to work. In chapter, tw in chapter 22, um, basically it begins with like the laws of, of robbery, basically crimes involving property, robbery, theft, that sort of thing. And it uh, even gets into criminal neg negligence. Uh, these laws are really the basis of our modern day legal system. And, and we'll see a lot of the same um, situations that come up in modern day legalism got its foundation right here. And, and something that I learned as I was studying through this, preparing for these lessons, uh, it came to, to, to the realization that since our, a lot of our own legal system is based upon sacred scripture, although um, the, 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 the humanists don't want to admit that, uh, they don't want to recognize that the legal foundation is the Bible, uh, the, the basis is biblical, although they don't, they're not quoting scripture. But as we study the scripture, you can see where the basis comes from. You can see that the, that the, the laws of man are uh, undoubtedly based on God's standard as given in sacred scripture. So let's take a look. Let's, we're going to start, uh, see very, very quickly how this jumps off. Exodus 22, verse 1. If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep, and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, four sheep for a sheep. And we see this principle. It puts responsibility and liability on the, on the offenders. It's not something new. And if you stole something from a man, you're going to have to replace it for an ox or a sheep five times. And for an ox five times, but for a sheep four times. So you're going to have to pay, like there's a principle in, in awarding damages. Where if you ever, uh, there was this thing called a treble damages. If you, um, if you defraud somebody, or if you commit certain types of crimes, especially if you're a, a, a found in violation of the RICO Act, and uh, the money that you stole can be recovered from you, then you can actually sue for treble damages, three times the amount. Well, this principle came from Scripture. In uh, the, the, the children of Israel, if you stole something from your old brother and you will find out, you're going to have to pay it back. And if, it's, if you stole an ox, you got to pay it, you got to give back, you got to give up five, you got to give the value of five oxes. If you stole a sheep, you have to give the, the value of four sheep. Verse 2. If a thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, no blood shall be shed for him. Now let me explain how that, how that works out. If you got caught stealing and somebody kill you, they are not, you can't, uh, uh, they, they cannot be charged with murder. It's open season on a thief. You get caught stealing, to, uh, uh, breaking in or robbing. And you get killed. Uh, your family can't go after the person who killed you. And there is a, a principle among the Jews. If you kill someone. 
and the avenger of your family came and killed you, then uh, they were justified. That's how it went. An eye for an eye. We're going to see that right here in the scripture. If the sun is risen upon him, blood is due for him. He shall repay in full. If he has nothing, then he shall be sold for his death. If you ain't got nothing, you become a slave until your debt is paid. If the theft is certainly found in his hand alive, whether it is an ass and an ox or a sheep, he shall restore it double. So if you if you stole something and they are able to recover it, you're still going to be liable for two times that value. But if you stole something and they can't find it, then you have to pay five times for an ox, four times for a sheep. Because, you know, folks steal stuff and then they sell it and they can't find it. Or they, uh, uh, you know, it, it, they destroy it. If any man causes a field of vineyard to be eaten and shall put in his animal and shall feed in another man's field, he shall repay from the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard. You can't take your cow, your ox, your sheep and put in another man's field so they can eat the grass. So you're dealing with the uh, 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 crimes against property, different types of theft. If fire breaks out and catches in thorns so that the stacks of grain or standing grain of the field is burned up, he who kindled the fire shall repay in full. So if you, uh, if you set another man's field on fire, his, uh, burn somebody's property up, you're going to have to repay it. So they, these are uh, uh, laws against criminal negligence. If a man shall deliver to his neighbor silver or stuff to keep, and it is stolen out of the man's house, if the thief is found, let him pay double. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house shall be brought to the judges whether he has put his hand to his neighbor's goods. For every case of trespass for ox, for ass, for sheep, for clothing, or any kind of lost thing which another claims to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double to his neighbor. If it turns out that because something is lost while it's in your care, while you got possession of it, it belonged to somebody else, if it's lost, you got to pay double. So uh, these, these laws that require responsibility, uh, you know, you can't say uh, if uh, somebody leaves something with you, if you, if, if uh, and you say, well, I'm going to look out for it for you. They leave it in your possession. You're responsible for it. If a man delivers to his neighbors, a neighbor, an ass or an ox or a sheep or any animal to keep, and it dies or is hurt or is driven away, no one seeing, an oath of Jehovah shall be between them both that he has not put his hand to his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept it, and he shall not make it good. So if, if, um, if, the, if the ox or the ass dies of natural causes, it's not, it's not that you, you can't be held liable. That's basically what it turns out. You, you, can't, you can't be held liable. Uh, uh, it, sometimes stuff happens to dumb animals. But if it's stolen, the person who stole it is liable. If it was uh, injured, the person who injured it, now check this out, look at verse 12. And if it is stolen from him, he shall fully repay the owner of it. If it is torn in pieces, let him bring it for a witness and he shall not make good that which is torn. See, sometimes um, the, uh, animals get hurt. They get hurt by other animals. They get hurt by wild animals. You bring the animal before the, the court and you can see that uh, nobody stole it. It just got, it, uh, it was in the field. It might have been your field, but you're not responsible for it in this condition. But if a man borrows from his neighbor and it is hurt or dies, the owner of it not with it, he shall surely make it good. If you borrowed it, that's one thing. If you say, hey, man, let me, let me borrow your, your ox 
so I can apply my field. Because my ox uh, in labor or something, I mean, my ox done hurt a leg and he can't pull the plow. Let me borrow yours. Well, if, it, if, you, if you borrow your neighbor's, then you got to make it good. If the owner of it is with it, he should not make it good. If it is high, it came for its high. See, what it is, if you, if you loaned it out, that's one thing. If you borrow it, if, if you are with it and it gets injured, then um, it, it's, it's, it's as if it was still in your possession, although somebody else had it. Now, verses 16 until the end of the chapter basically have to do with laws of social justice. These are laws concerning human behavior, whether it's with other humans or with beasts. These are some strange laws. I want you to pay attention. Now, so, so in a nutshell, the first 15 verses involve laws against property, dealing with robbery, theft, or criminal negligence. Okay? Now, verse 16. If a man lures a virgin who is not promised and lies with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If you lay up with somebody else's daughter, she ain't um, uh, 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 been promised to somebody else, you got to marry her. Uh, uh, you ever heard of the uh, shotgun weddings? Well, that's where it comes from. If a, if a young woman was already betrothed to another man and you lay with them, uh, let me tell you what happens right then. Let's see how that works out. If the father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. You shall not allow a sorceress to live. Uh, if a woman is a, a, a sorceress, someone who is engaged in witchcraft, you got to, it, uh, uh, that's a death sentence. Anyone lying with the animal says, surely be put to death. Uh, lying with the animal, the folks who would have uh, sex with sheep and goats. Uh, uh, the be the, uh, they call it bestiality. It's some, it's, it's some sick folk out there, always have been. Anyone sacrificing to a god except it is Jehovah only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Idolatry takes a death sentence. So if you sacrifice an animal on some uh, uh, brazen altar, that's a death sentence. See, the, the Canaanites, and uh, why would God put these laws in place? He did not want the children of Israel sacrificing. He says, I'm a jealous God. Uh, you will worship me before you worship anybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm a jealous God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you will have no other God. There should be no other God before you. So everything else um, basically reinforces that first law. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 21. You shall neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you afflict them in, in any way, and they cry at all to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath shall become hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows and sons fatherless. If you lend money to one of my people who is poor beside you, you shall not be unto him as a money lender. You shall lay, neither shall you lay upon him interest. Now, isn't it amazing why most of the whole, uh, the banking system is primarily controlled by the Jews? I'm not laughing. You, are you, how you doing there? I was trying to put the um, chapter title. Okay. Okay. The only thing that's going to show is the title and the background. Nothing else is loaded. Okay. As I was saying, isn't it amazing that the Jews basically control the financial system? The world's financial system, most of the banks, uh, they got into banking a long time ago. 
But here's the law. The law the Lord told them you can't charge each other interest, but to charge interest to everybody else. Okay? I mean, uh, ain't nothing like lending money, being in the money lending business. That's um, uh, when some companies recognize that um, uh, your product is not going, it's not what's going to make you money. Because uh, oftentimes the profit margin is not that great. But you make money by financing it. You can get a lot more interest than you can mark up. If you at all take your neighbor's clothing as a pledge, you shall deliver, deliver it to him by the time the sun goes down. And if it is for his covering only, it is his, cloth, his uh, clothing for his skin, in what shall he sleep? And it shall be, when he cries to me, I will hear, for I am gracious. Uh, he, 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 some, he, well, what people would do, they would put their overcoat on as collateral. Mm. And uh, and uh, they may not be able to pay you back. You got to give them their coat back. Mm -hmm. That day. Now, they still owe you, but you still got to give them their coat back. Mm -hmm. If that's all they got, that's what you got to give them. Mm -hmm. You should not revile God, nor curse the ruler of your people. Okay, my goodness. Uh, 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 this is a, this is a double-edged sword here. Uh, you know how we love to talk about the president? You, you know, even when old uh, uh, um, Trump was in the White House, uh, and you cut on uh, the, late, the late show with uh, Jimmy Kimmel and uh, what's-his-face, um, uh, that's all they talked about, mocking the president. Now, he, he put a lot of, he did a lot of dumb things and say a lot of really vile and stupid things that would cause ridicule. Um, that's a whole other matter. But the fact that he was the president should uh, allow a certain a matter of respect. Now, he didn't give it. See, as a ruler, the other laws governing the ruler should respect. So it's a double-edged sword. But the, anyway, that's where the principle comes from. You shall not delay giving the fullness of your crops and juices of your vineyards. You shall give the firstborn of your sons to me. Likewise, you shall do with your oxen and your sheep. It shall be with its dam seven days. On the eighth day, you shall give it to me. You shall be holy men to me neither shall you eat flesh torn by beasts in the field you shall throw it to the dogs if a if an animal died in the field you can't eat roadkill that's basically what what he said if, if it's if it's killed in the field if it's roadkill you can't eat it if you didn't kill the animal for slaughter yourself you can't eat it. If it died of its own accord or by accident or, or, or uh, 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 if, it, if it was torn by other beasts, you can't eat it. Let the dogs eat it. And now, now, oftentimes, disease would be in animals if there are... Uh, um, if they die of natural causes, what kill that animal could also kill you. So these laws actually are protecting the Jewish people for possible biohazards involved in eating a meat that was tainted. That is the reason why the Jews did not die during the great um, plague of, e of Europe in the Middle Ages. In fact, they thought the Jews were using witchcraft because everybody else was dying and they didn't. But to, because their laws protected them. Now, they didn't know the science behind the laws, but God did. They didn't know anything about uh, cross-contamination. They didn't know anything about foodborne illnesses. So uh, God said, uh, you don't eat certain things. 
and it, it protected them. So when these disease carrying organisms mm -hmm. were um, infecting animals and causing animals to get sick, well the Jews they didn't eat they, they would drain the blood out of the animals. They wouldn't eat blood with the uh, uh, meat with the blood still in it because the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So if if there was some disease in that flesh, it would be in the blood. So you, by draining the blood, the disease in the blood would not be carried to a human. And those laws actually protected them. So we see uh, in that, that the 22nd chapter, the laws against property, laws against theft, laws against criminal negligence, and, and the laws of social justice. Uh, laws concerning human behavior. Now, chapter 23 is really a continuation of chapter 22. But they're dealing with other laws involving social justice. Uh, dealing with perjury, libel, slander, and bribery. These first nine verses kind of hit all of that. You shall not raise a false report. Do not put your hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. This is a, 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 a complete um, uh, annulment of anyone who might perjure themselves in court. You don't lie in court. See, the, the way the legal system today and then work, the people who are giving testimony got to be truthful. Mm. If everybody lying, mm. it causes all kinds of chaos. Look at our society right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we got uh, 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 one person lost the election, mm -hmm. and he uh, done convinced everybody that he that the election was stolen. He lied. He knew he was lying, but he kept telling the lie anyway. And uh, God knows how how dangerous a lie can be. You should not follow a multitude to do evil. You all remember January six? After that lie, he done uh, riled up a multitude to do evil. Neither shall you speak in a cause in order to follow many in order to rest judgment. So you can't not just, if you know it's wrong, don't don't yeast it up. Don't incite others with your incendiary words so that they would do evil. That's what he's talking about here. Uh, don't um, use angry words or inciting mob violence to overthrow judgment. A jury tampering. Don't go and uh, 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 say words that's going to uh, affect how other people think. If it's going to have a, a negative impact on the fairness of another. And you should not favor a poor man in his cause. You know, sometimes just because somebody rich, oh, yeah. you find in, in court, you find against the poor man. Well, the poor man don't have to come in this time. Mm -hmm. If you meet your enemy's ox or his ass going astray, you shall surely bring it back to him. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, you know it's not your cow. The cow has a brand. You know somebody else's brand. The cow doesn't want it all. You take the cow back to its owner. Mm -hmm. You don't act like you didn't know. Mm -hmm. If you see the ass of him who hates you lying under his burden and will hold back from helping him, you shall surely help him. So just because you don't like somebody, if they're in trouble, you got to help them. Mm -hmm. Even if he just cuts you out. You shall not pervert the judgment of the poor in his cause. Okay, now in the uh, verse um, 3 said, you don't favor the poor. But here we are in verse 6, you don't pervert the judgment of the poor. So it worked both ways. You, the idea here in fairness, if you're giving testimony, be truthful and be fair. Keep far from the false matter, and do not kill the innocent and righteous, 
for I will not justify the wicked. It, it, is an, it is a responsibility of everyone involved to make sure to do what's going to, what will facilitate justice. That's the idea. In, in uh, the, uh, the gray areas, uh, what uh, Martin Luther King said, mm -hmm. the arc of justice, the arc of the universe is long, but it leans towards justice. Mm -hmm. And it leans toward justice because these laws are in place and God has put them in our hearts. There, there is a, a tendency, humans have a tendency to know what's fair mm -hmm. and know what's equitable. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to, you still know. And, and most people, and if you decide that you want to honor God with how you live and how you conduct your affairs, that's why the arc of, uh, uh, of the universe uh, leans toward justice. Because God's laws are just and God has put these laws in our hearts. Now, do we always honor what God has put in our heart? No. That's why injustice uh, uh, the, uh, is it, it, so rampant in the world. Look at verse 8. And he said, Take no bribe, for the bribe blinds the wise and perverts the words of right of the righteous. Uh, 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 don't let folk pay you off. Bribery defeats, it, it, it limits the ability of justice to, to manifest. Verse 9. And ye also, you shall not oppress a stranger, for you know the heart of a stranger, since you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You know, it, it is amazing, though, people who have um, been involved in, if you've been a victim, very often, you're going to have empathy for other victims. But I've also seen a case where some people, the ungodly who have been victimized, mm -hmm. tend once they get in power and authority to victimize others. There's a there's a, a tendency among humanity that that happens, and it's a shame. And you know better. Mm -hmm. See, the children of Israel they were told, "Don't oppress strangers," because when you were a stranger, mm -hmm. you were oppressed. And how'd you like that? So how you think they're gonna feel? Now these are beginning at verse 10 and here in chapter 23. These are laws governing the Sabbath and festivals. Uh, the reason why, remember now, God was getting the children of Israel ready for the promised land. And they had a lot of the, the, the ways of the Egyptians and the knowledge of the Egyptians. Uh, they, were, it was, they, they were stuck in it. And so in order for them, the ways of the Egyptian, they could not bring that into the promised land. So God had to clean them up. And so he gave them these laws, put these, this, this system of justice in place so that when it's their time, okay, when it's their time, you have got to do it right. Okay? You got to do it right. Uh, he, he, God knows how he wants to be worshipped. And you can't worship him any kind of way. This is what Jesus told Nicodemus. He said, uh, worship, got to worship him. Uh, this, he told the woman at, at, uh, 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 of Samaria, the woman at the well, uh, God wants people to worship, but those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God don't want all kinds of profane worship. He doesn't want all kinds of ostentatious worship. He doesn't want worship that has been corrupted. He don't want worship when you're putting the sacrifice, you're going to sacrifice animals that are not worthy. You're going to give him, instead of giving him your best, you, you bring in the worst. He said, I want the first. I want the first fruit. I want the best. 
I want the first cow that uh, of the cow. I want the first of the cattle. I want the curve, the first of the the fruit of the, the field and the fruit of the vine. If you can give me the first, the rest gonna be way gonna be more. If, if you're willing to give me the first, oh, yeah. I'm gonna make sure you have more. Mm -hmm. It's all about trust. It's all about faith in God. You gotta have faith in God, faith in His Word, faith in His in His in His decrees. Mm -hmm. And you shall sell your land six years and shall gather the fruit in it. Remember uh, the law of the Sabbath. Will it also work on the field? Now, I'm going to tell you a little something about uh, what every farmer knows. There's this thing called crop rotation. If you had, let's say you had, just to keep the math straight, let's say you had seven acres of land. And you would, you would not, uh, every year, mm -hmm. one acre you left uncultivated. You left, you left to let it go fallow. Every year, one of those acres you do not plant on. You use six, but not one. So every at the end of every seven years, one of those acres will have satisfied this law. That don't see if you plant six acres, if you plant seven, all seven of your acres every year, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to go one year and don't plant nothing. You go, y'all gonna starve to death. So how they would do it? The, uh, 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 every year, one of one seventh of their land would not of their uh, of their farmland would not be planted. They let it go fallow. Okay. So at the end of every seven years, every acre would have gone through that Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But the seventh year, mm -hmm. you shall let it rest and let it alone, so that the poor of your people may eat. Mm -hmm. And that, that and what they leave, the animals of the field shall eat. In the same way, you shall deal with your vineyards and your olive yards. You shall do your work six days, and on the seventh day you shall rest, so that your ox and your ass may rest, and that the son of your handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Now let me tell you what happened. That field that goes fallow, mm -hmm. that you don't harvest, there might be some food left in that field. Mm -hmm. You didn't plant it. You didn't do anything with it. So if the, if the, the strangers come on that field, they can actually glean from that field. And then, then during during the harvest, you didn't clean everything. If it's, uh, uh, um, if you go through it and you left something, you got to leave it alone. You can't go back and do it the second time. That so that the the strangers and the poor people could go and glean the field. That's how the law went. There wasn't no welfare in those days, and that was God's welfare system. You don't take everything out of the field. You leave some. The edges you leave. Along the edges you leave so that the strangers, the fatherless, the widows, they can go. Remember the story, Ruth? How do you think Ruth met uh, Boaz? She gleaned in Boaz's field. The, 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 the sister, God put the law in place so that everybody... The rich and the poor could survive. Okay. Now we remember when we went through the law of, of slaves. If a Hebrew was a slave to another Hebrew, he could not, after the seventh year, you got to let him go. And then when you let him go, you had to let him go with something. It wasn't like the slavery in, our, in, uh, the, in American history. Where they enslaved people for each for their entire lifetime. Oh, yeah. With the Jews, if a Jew was, had enslaved another Jew, because mm -hmm. you know if you owe somebody some money, uh, you became a slave for six years mm -hmm. and worked off your debt. Mm -hmm. At the seventh year, they had to let you go. 
verse 13, and be watchful in all that I have said to you, and make no mention of other the name of other gods, let it be heard out of your mouth. You shall keep a feast to me three times a year, and you shall keep the, keep the feast of unleavened bread, and you shall eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded you at the time appointed of the month of Bia, for in it you came out of Egypt, and no one shall appear before me empty. Uh, guess what? Every Jew understood that. So these three feasts, the main one was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It re represented the, uh, that was the feast that they celebrated during the Passover. Then in verse 16, also the Feast of the Harvest, the first fruits of your labor which you have sown in the field, also the Feast of Ingathering, in the end of the year, when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. So the first fruits and the end fruits. So there's a feast. The feast of the harvest. Three times in the year, all your males shall appear before the Lord God. And you shall offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven. Neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. And the first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of Jehovah your God. And you, you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. Now that's a, um, that's an interesting, uh, 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 the, the kid, so if, if a, if a, a kid is still nursing. Mm -hmm. You would not sacrifice that one. Mm -hmm. The first fruit. If, if, if the timing works out so that that kid is still nursing, then you would have to use another kid. Okay? Now, verses 20 until the end of the chapter. Mm -hmm. See, you know, the, you know, the a, a young kid that was still being nursed, you can't eat him. You can't use him in a sacrifice, and you can't eat it. Now, uh, verses twenty until the end of the chapter is dealing with the promise of the conquest of Canaan. That's where we see this here. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. He's talking about the land of Canaan. Be on guard before him and obey his voice. Do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if you shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. Uh, let me unpack that for a minute. What God is telling the children of Israel, if you do what I tell you, I'm going to protect you. But if you don't, you're on your own. Now, they understood what was happening, and God had to put these, he had to put this, the, 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 Some parameters around him. He had to put some some boundaries. So you you just can't do anything and call yourself a child of God. God, I mean, he he you he you want to he wants you to re respect not only his authority but his sovereignty over your life. So he put these rules in place so that so that his name will be glorified. He knows that if you if you unless you purge yourself. Of all the wickedness that you learned from the Egyptians, when it's time to go, you won't be worthy to go into the promised land. Now, I, 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 can I tell y'all about what happened in the back of the book? Not, not that, that, only a handful mm -hmm. that went into Egypt went into the promised land. That's why they stayed in, in the wilderness 40 years. And uh, we're going to see a little later why. 
they, 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 they turn out they weren't worthy. He says, and ye shall not bow down to, the, to their gods, nor serve them. Ye shall not do according to their works. Ye shall, but ye shall surely pull down, and surely you shall smash their images. Uh, the idolatry of the Canaanites. They were, they were going to be, uh, have to deal with the Canaanites. They got to deal with the Perizzites, the Amorites, the Hivites. When they go into these lands, uh, God did not want them intermingling with these people because they got to end up picking up their bad habits. Mm -hmm. And you shall serve Jehovah your God. He shall bless your bread and your water and your make will take sickness away from the midst of you. Nothing shall cast nothing shall cast their young, mm -hmm. nor be barren in the land. Mm -hmm. The number of your days I will fill. Uh, ain't gonna be no miscarriages, mm -hmm. either with y'all or your animals. Okay. If you get pregnant, the baby's gonna be born. Oh but y'all gotta honor me with how you live. You cannot practice the dollar tree. You can't bow down to the gods with little G of the people that you are going to face. I will send my fear before you and will destroy all the people to whom you shall come. And I will make your enemies turn their backs on you. And I will send the hornets before you and he which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, right. lest the land become waste, mm -hmm. and the beasts of the field multiply against you. Now let me let me unpack that one a little bit. He's not going to do it quickly. You got to go in behind him and get your work done. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to keep the battle on. Okay. You got to keep your guard up. God can, he's going to run them out, but as you push them out, mm -hmm. by little and little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and inherit the land. Mm -hmm. See, what's happening, they're going to die off, they will be pushed out, okay. and you're going to increase. Mm -hmm. as you, your increase will come as long as you are obedient to my word, mm -hmm. and you honor me with your worship, and your obedience. And I will stretch your bounds from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand and you shall drive them out before you and you shall make no covenant with them or with their God. Now I want you to take a put a pin in that. Because as you, as we go, now if you y'all recall, we went through the book of Joshua a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And remember when the children of Israel made a covenant with these people in um, in Joshua. Mm -hmm. And they became, they were drove by everybody else. Mm -hmm. But it was the Malachites that they let live. Mm -hmm. And they, they said, they act like, um, they, they, they think as if that uh, uh, one of the other uh, uh, groups, mm. one of the other peoples had uh, uh, conquered them and they, they asked Israel to help them. Well, guess what? Israel was supposed to kill them too. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 uh, they, they, they faked it. Instead of pushing them out, mm -hmm. they let them live, mm -hmm. and they, they paying that price right now to this day. Mm -hmm. Right now to this day. They shall not dwell in your land lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it surely will be a, a snare to you. And that's exactly what happened. That is exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to 24. In chapter 24, uh, uh, Moses and Aaron mm -hmm. and the sons of Aaron and the 70 elders of Israel 
come before the Lord and the Lord is getting ready to get to get them ready. Mm -hmm. He's getting ready to give them the law. They're going to get the law and uh, once you have the law, you're responsible to keep it. Mm -hmm. But he didn't bring everybody. He just brought Moses and Aaron. Right. Um, Aaron has two sons, Nadab and Abihu. I want y'all to remember their names because they're going to come up again. And the 70 elders of Israel. Uh, verse 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up to Jehovah, you and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and the 70 of the elders of Israel and bow yourselves afar off. So y'all come to the mound, but don't come up. Just come. Come to this area. And Moses alone shall come near Jehovah, but they shall not come near, neither shall the people go up with them. And Moses came and told the people all the words of Jehovah, and all the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Jehovah has said, we will do. Now, everything that I read to you from chapters 22 and 23, Moses came back and gave that report to the people. And Moses wrote all the words of Jehovah and rose up early in the morning and built an altar before the mountain and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent the young men of the sons of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of bulls to Jehovah. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the ears of the people and they read and they said, all that Jehovah has said, we will do and, and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that Jehovah has made with you concerning all these words. And Moses went up, and Aaron, and Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone as the essence of the heavens for clearness. Now, let me kind of explain this to you. They can look up in the mountain. They can see the thunder. They can see the lightning up on it. This is the image that they saw on that mountain. Okay? And upon the nobles, the sons of Israel, he did not lay his hands. Also, they saw God, and they ate and drank. And Jehovah said to Moses, Come up to me in the mountain and be there, and I will give you tablets of stone and the law and the commandments which I have written so that you may teach them. And Moses rose up and his attendant Joshua and Moses went up to the mountain and he said to the elders, You stay here for us until we come again to you. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. If any man has any manners to do, matters to do, let him come to them. So uh, uh, Aaron and her would judge the people while Moses is gone, and the glory of Jehovah abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days, and the seventh day he called Moses out of the cloud, in the midst, out of the midst of the cloud, and the sight of the glory of Jehovah was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the sons of Israel, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud and went up into the mountain and Moses was in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights and that's how chapter 24 ends and uh, boy look at him it's going to be a mess when you come back off that mountain that's all I'm going to tell you I'm going to leave it like that so here they are they've been given instructions they've been told that if y'all do right I'm going to drive the, the people uh, out uh, I'm going to have uh, like, a, like hornets but you got to go in, you got to do right, do right by me, do according to the word of God that I have given you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my part, y'all got to do your part. I would not accept uh, 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 um, vain offerings, I would not accept uh, uh, vain worship. Mm -hmm. They've been given instructions, mm -hmm. they know what their responsibilities are. And uh, God told them that if you do right by me, I'm going to bless you. But if you don't, there will be consequences. And, and all they had to do was what, what they said, what they promised that they would do. 
They promised that they would obey. But go and look here now. A, 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 um, if you look at this 11th verse. Mm -hmm. And upon the nobles of the sons of Israel, he did not lay his hands. Yeah. Also, they saw God mm -hmm. and ate and drank. Mm -hmm. They should have been more solemn. That's kind of going to be a, a, a telltale sign of what is to come. Mm -hmm. They weren't keeping it serious. Mm -hmm. They were able to see God but they ignore what they saw. Mm -hmm. they, they, it's like they couldn't wait for Moses to get away. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before you people one more time. We thank you for the privilege of sharing the word. So we pray right now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus that your people will apprehend the great truths of, these, of the scripture and learn the application that is appropriate for our time. The system of justice and equity and fairness is not something new. It's not something to be despised. It is something that you tried to instill in your people thousands of years ago. It is something that needs to be honored to this day. And I pray right now in Jesus' name that those in our culture that has a problem with these principles will repent of their sin and fall upon their knees and ask for forgiveness. So we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Uh, we're going to see y'all on uh, Sunday 10, at 10.15. 10 we'll be back here starting at tw chapter 25 of Exodus. And um, as God continues to give the law and the preparations for the children of Israel to conduct themselves appropriately in the promised land. So we'll see y'all next time. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy. The only true and wise God, may glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever, and all of God's people say amen. All right, man.